Let's take a look at Parkside's or Lidl's holiday irrigation system. This is a system where you plug in this pump and it does come with a low voltage power supply. It puts out 14 volts, but interestingly, it runs for one minute at a time and it only runs once a day. So basically speaking, it's the equivalent of you watching your garden once a day. And the pump itself has three outputs and they lead to these I guess distribution manifolds is the best way to describe them via pipe mark. And you can choose, depending on how many plants you need to water, how many of these you want to use. So you get two blanking caps. They don't give you three, which is good because otherwise you'd block all the outputs of the pump. So they've got two blanking caps, but also these uh, grips that you thread the thicker pipe through. And once you've threaded it through, you push it over these outlets of the pump and then you screw this down and it grips it in place and then the other end of that you can then use uh, this manifold here and depending on how many plants you want to water again you run a sort of plasticky pipe from each of these to the required plant uh, position and you stuff the other end into these spikes that go into the ground so you can have maybe depending the amount of water you need just one or you could maybe have three or add some more of these if you want for regulates the amount of water and if there's any of these positions not being used you can put these little silicone rubber caps into them to block them up so it lets you choose the amount of water okay let's get the bulky items out the way It also comes with, talking about bulky items, a big bucket. A rectangular bucket that holds the whole kit, but you can just dangle it into an ordinary bucket of water, noting that it has to be below the level of the plants to avoid uh, water siphoning out once it starts to flow. So let's take a look at the pump and the control system for it. So I'll push these things out of the way. The pump, which is a low voltage pump, has the water intake at the, here and there's also some vent holes here for letting air out. Underneath there is a foam filter donut, which to make sure that it's pressed against the bottom and the water is actually being uh, pushed into the system by this little impeller down here. So this just sits down there and stops any sort of debris from going up into that. Let's open the other end and see if we can see more. So I have a screwdriver here, and we'll take this off. You're not supposed to take this off, but we do. We take everything apart. Then we can reverse engineer the power supply and see what sort of circuitry it has inside it. Perhaps a microcontroller, perhaps, and a conventional power supply. So... All right, there's the little impeller. Are we getting any closer in here? That rotates. Ooh, there's the motor. Is this just held? Oh, that is just held in with the impeller. Could I prize that out or am I just going to break it? I'm probably just going to break it. Right, tell you what, I'll leave that. Oh, there's an inductor, common mode inductor in there for noise suppression. That's interesting. So this appears to be a cable coming in, going into the middle of the inductor, uh, going onto the two wires, and then going out to the motor itself. Interesting. Uh, but it does look a, like a conventional DC motor, and they are therefore relying on a uh, water-resistant um, seal where it's rotating through. I wonder how that'll last. Anyway, now we move on to the power supply. The best thing to do with the power supply is for me to smash it open, take the circuit board out, take a photo, and then reverse engineer it, and then we can explore it. I shall do that. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. The circuit board has a fairly good quality power supply. I mean, there's lots of filtering, there's lots of extra protection. It's quite good, and definitely lots of electrical separation, as you'd expect from a little type of product. Um, and the way it's assembled and gets its power is when the circuit board is literally just clipped into this case, there are two spring-loaded contacts that make connection with uh, these two pads here. And depending on the country that it's being sold in, the plug will vary and it will just clip in. This other ribbed area here, uh, let me show you that, on the uh, reverse of the circuit board. Actually, I should zoom down this, shouldn't I? I shall zoom down. One moment... 
I have zoomed. So what we have here is uh, the two connection points, live and neutral, going on. And then this is actually a sort of heat sink for the shot key diode and the output. Good electrical separation. Note these pads here because they correlate to to uh, Y1, well, CY, CY1 and CY2. It's got the electrical noise uh, suppression capacitors that go between the main side and the low voltage side. But for extra safety, they've put two in series. That's excellent. And look at the thickness of the insulation here. This transformer looks as though it's actually been wound well with good uh, length of this sort of stick out bit of plastic for separation to keep the output connections well away from the windings. All good stuff. So before I show you the schematic, I shall show you there's a fuse here, bridge rectifier. There is a, a pair of capacitors separated by an inductor. I'll show you that in the drawing. Well, two inductors, there's a little surface mount one and another bigger one here. We've got the usual bootstrap circuit. That's a capacitor that powers the circuitry with this little chip down here. And uh, it's initially powered by these high value resistors here that trickle charge that capacitor up. Once it's running, it starts pulsing the windings in the transformer and then it gives itself feedback. I'll show you that in the schematic. Over in the secondary, there is the shot key diode with a little snubber network across it to protect it. There's a little LED that shows when the unit's running, uh, smoothing capacitor, and then a couple of transistors. This appears to be a P channel MOSFET being switched by a standard NPN transistor a microcontroller, and then rather surprisingly, a crystal for timing accuracy, which means that literally, depending on how they've designed this, it's literally going to be accurate to within, well, probably a second a day, hopefully. Uh, and here's an opto-isolator, which is also surprising with a little uh, voltage reference chip that I do not recognize the number on, 9AUD. Typing that in gives nine Australian dollars, which isn't really helpful. Let's take a look at the first part of the circuitry, which is the high voltage side. And for this, it was quite easy. Is this going to fit in? I'm not sure if it's going to fit in. It's it's kind of going to fit in. I shall zoom out just a little tiny bit more. One moment. That's better. So I've scrubbed out this bit, the input circuitry, because it is just showing a fuse and a bridge rectifier going straight to the capacitor. But in reality, it does have the fuse and the bridge rectifier. But then it's a capacitor, two inductors. One is 470 microhenry. And then I'm not sure what that one is because it's surface mount and not marked. And then there's another smooth capacitor. Both of those are 400 volt, 10 microfarad. Is that right? Is it 400 volt or is it 450 volt? 400 volt standard death beam capacitors. Okay, moving on to the rest of the circuitry. Uh, everything is done in duplicate. There's instead of just one component, there's two. They've really gone a belt and braces here. It's very good. So there's the, initially when it's powered up, these two 3 mega ohm resistors, quite an odd value, start charging this capacitor here, which is the power supply capacitor. Once it reaches a certain threshold, this chip starts pulsing the primary winding here, which doesn't just couple current across, but it also couples it to that feedback winding, which is used for sensing uh, the output potentially, although I don't see a divider here for that. But it also, uh, via this diode, it uh, then tops that capacitor up and it basically the circuitry then powers itself. And it also by monitoring the voltage across that capacitor, it, it may roughly reflect what's happened on the other side and it can detect fault conditions. However, the feedback is done via opto isolation. There is a snubber network across the primary with lots of duplicate components here. Two 100 ohm resistors for 50 ohms in, in parallel, uh, and then two 430k to give approximately 215,000 ohms across that capacitor. What happens there is when this uh, chip turns on and it energizes this uh, primary winding, when it turns off, it, it may take a, a tiny fraction of a second for the circuitry for the coupling across to the other side to damp that. So what it does, the tiny switch off spike it gets goes diverted through this diode and charges that capacitor and that then gets trickle discharged by these resistors. It just protects it. There are two current sense resistors which measure the current flowing through that and will determine when to turn the coil off when it's kind of saturated as such. And the principle of this is that, you know, it builds up a magnetic field in here and then this side turns off, the field collapses, and that's when it gets diverted through this shot key diode to charge up this capacitor. There is a little snubber network across that shot key diode because they hate uh, 
excess reverse voltage. And if you get the collapsing fuel uh, spike, or even just the initial uh, spike before it starts conducting, what would that be? What polarity would that be? I think it's probably when this is being energized, you'd get that sort of a, uh, you'd get that sort of slight transient voltage. What that snubber does is it just basically charges that capacitor again. It just shunts that little spike a little bit and protects the uh, the diode. It's kind of needed. That was the downfall of the, uh, was it the Nest thermostats that would fail was the lack of a little snubber network was a factor in that. There are also two 1.2K resistors as a load across that. That might seem high, but keep in mind that this normally isn't loaded. Uh, it's only loaded for one minute a day when this, the little circuit kicks in. The output voltage 14 volts is set by this potential divider providing a fixed voltage to this TL431, although it's actually marked differently. Uh, it was marked, oh, that is the 9AUD, but it's a TL431 type voltage sensor chip that once it reaches that threshold voltage, it turns on, the opto isolator conducts, and then it couples across and it tells us to sort of turn off and cut back and uh, putting energy across. But these two resistors, can, providing a little discharge continually, mean that this just packs every so often when it's not uh, supplying a lot of current and it just keeps everything topped up, including its own power supply. There is also a diode across the optoise that is not shown the original uh, uh, information, the, the sort of like the demonstration data sheet, the suggested circuitry. There's the connection going rather oddly the Y capacitors, which are designed to provide, they're designed to fail safely for if there's a, if they do fail, um, but they are designed to couple some of the current that's uh, coupled capacitively, and uh, by other means through this uh, transformer because it runs at quite high frequency, and they just provide a path back to prevent it being radiated as interference from the cable. Um, but they are usually connected to the negative of the primary side, but they're connected to the positive of the primary side here. It doesn't really matter. It's just, I suppose, ultimately just pick one and go with it, so to speak, as long as it can find its way back to the mains. Right, let's take a look at the other part of the circuitry, which is the low voltage side. I'll just grab that now. Here we go. So there is the 14 volt supply. Here's zero volts. Uh, it derives a 5 volt supply via a 680 ohm, just to basically take some of the dissipation off a tiny little 5 volt linear regulator. It's not really going to use much current, it's basically powering the microcontrollers, very little current, even driving the transistors. But oddly, and this had me testing backwards and forwards all the time, I'm used to seeing, say, a 5 volt supply or whatever, and then a decoupling resistor, and then the supply to a capacitor, and then the supply coming off that. But for some reason, they have a capacitor, and then they've got a little sort of snubbing network capacitor here, a little attenuated reservoir resistor and capacitor. I've seen this in other circuits. It's quite an odd arrangement. It must have an advantage, I guess. It just softens the uh, ability to uh, smooth out transient, gives a little buffer. But anyway, there's the microcontroller. And it's rather oddly having a... It doesn't have any button inputs. It's purely got this crystal here and two little load uh, load uh, capacitors to the zero volt rail and uh, then the output is going via a 4k sim resistor to turn on a classic npn 1am transistor and that pulls down a 100k resistor which is normally pulling the gate of a p-channel mosfet ao3401 up to the positive rail to keep it turned off when this turns on it shunts that uh, gate down to the zero volt rail and that uh, turns that MOSFET on and uh, that switches the motor on and the LED with a very high value 5.6 thousand ohm resistor but, but there's something missing. There's no diode for the back EMF spike that, spikes that you get from the motor. Uh, no, normally there would be a reverse diode across that and like I was wondering if I'd missed it in the circuit board somewhere but there's not. I wonder if that's going to affect the reliability of this transistor. But uh, that is more or less it. I was going to put a dot there, but there's no real need for a dot there. But I'll add a dot there anyway. So there we have it. The little watering system with its strange 
network of pipes uh, and modules that you just plug all the pipes together as you need. It looks as though it would be quite complex to set up, but once you've done it, then it's going to do all the watching in the background. It does require um, a main supply, though, to power it, although technically speaking, you could hack in and give it a 12-volt supply locally, I suppose. Um, but that's it. It's quite interesting. Um, quite a nicely designed power supply. Shame it's missing the diode uh, for protection on that MOSFET. But uh, other than that, it's uh, it's very well designed uh, up to that point, and the electrical separation looks excellent, and precise voltage feedback and everything. Even a fuse, that's a miracle. But there we have it. Very interesting stuff. The Aldi Parkside uh, Holiday Plant Irrigation System.